Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video I'm working on a Rochelle Goyle Monster High doll and making her into sort of a blue alien. In today's video I'll be showing a bit of the rooting process, the face up, including some of the unique techniques I used on the face, and also some of the costume creation and final photos. But before we get to it, I wanted to share with you the box opening of this incredible package I got a while back from the Doll Planet. I had already been following the Doll Planet on Instagram when I came across their shop on Etsy and when I was searching for some hair for a Sailor Moon commission. During my search, I found that their hair had just what I needed. It was able to take fairly high heat without melting and it was reasonably priced and they had a bunch of different colors to choose from. So in addition to my order, they were kind enough to send me some bonus packages, so I wanted to share those with you. So this is the order that I placed, which was called Barbarella, and it's um, all of their hair has these really fun names. Um, the Barbarella color was actually, I don't even think I ended up using that for the Sailor Moon, so I was really thankful that they had given me some other colors to choose from. But um, they're bundled up really nicely. Um, in these uh, plastic packages and tied together with some of the what are those things called the little um, pipe cleaners and I was really impressed with the softness and just much different than a lot of the fibers that I'm used to working with as you may know if you've been following my channel I don't usually use synthetic hair and so this was kind of a new uh, a new experience for me getting some synthetic hair in, in the mail so I was so excited to get all the the little bits as well so they uh, included a big sheet of information on how to use the hair how to root it and how to to best you know keep it a lot of suggestions on how to keep it from um, getting uh, like static cling and stuff so of keeping it damp and and boy it was a huge help and she when I had contacted them and thanked them for the uh, all of the information and in the package she even gave me some more information on rooting and I was so thankful because while I still didn't follow her directions perfectly with the first rooting that I did with it I see I saw exactly what she meant by um, keeping very small uh, small sections just only a few hairs in each section because it'll start getting heavy but once you do it correctly um, it, it sure is really nice so it was wrapped in this awesome paper I was trying to save it and I think I did put it in one of my little journals or scrapbooks because it was so fun And I was just blown away immediately with this huge stack of hair. So going through all the colors, some of them have more hair in it than others. Um, but they, you can mix these colors, you can like blend them together before you use them, or you can add just little, a little bit of highlights of one color to the other. It's so exciting to have this many available colors in my collection. And while I haven't used them as often as I would like to, um, I'm really so much look forward to using them. I usually use the, um, because of the type, it depends on the hairstyle that I'm trying to create. If I'm trying to create something that's like a big uh, 18th century hairstyle or a short hairstyle, a lot of those I'll tend to go to either alpaca fiber or, um, or the yarn but these if I want something like a really long flowy hairstyle or super long to the floor like Rapunzel like hair I'll definitely choose these first and so I'll be getting to them more in the future because just watching this video and doing this voiceover and looking at these gorgeous colors like look at that smoky light pink color and that green is just really my thing and then this dark red called red wedding and I just love the names that she has for some of these like a lot of them are from like Lord of the Rings names and Disney names and um, just very fun names for all of the colors and just so gorgeous so this pack here um, this is the uh, Sorry, this is the Deluxe Rooting Kit, and it sells for about $45 on their Etsy shop, and it is full of goodness. I'm not sure if it comes with uh, an extra pack of hair, but as you can see, there's a little hair 
bundle in there as well this really pretty pastel cotton cotton candy kind of pink and then more information about um, how to set up your rooting tool it comes with some galaxy glue it's called I like how their theme is so cute it's the the doll planet and it's all kind of like space person spare like um, alien or space girl <laughs> uh, themed very fun but this is the rooting tool it comes with and I have used it um, and it's great it's uh, I, I would highly recommend it especially if you're a beginner I'm used to the one that I have so I haven't used it as frequently um, but it's definitely great to have and it's very similar to the one that I use but mine has a, a different uh, a ball a different ball on the end and then a hemostat is included which is always awesome to remove the hair and then some rooting needles which are in this nice little package So it has the size of the needles, and which is great because I don't even know anything about the size of needles. Um, and I break a lot of needles, so it was so nice to have this extra pack. So there is their information, thedollplanet.com. Make sure to check them out, especially if you're on the lookout for some doll hair. I highly recommend their hair. It worked beautifully for what I wanted, and again, I can't wait to use it for more. I do a lot of commissions, so it's very rare that I have the opportunity to just make a doll that I want to. Um, so, But when I do, I'll definitely pull out this stash of hair and start uh, with some of my favorite colors. So thank you so much for you guys over at The Doll Planet. I am so thankful for this huge pack and I'm sorry it took so long for me to share this video with you. I know when we talked we wanted I wanted to share the box opening and um, it just had been a while since I was eight till I was able to post a video with the uh, a doll that I was rooting with this hair. So these are some of the colors that I chose for my Sailor Moon and you can see the uh, I'll show a photo of the Sailor Moon and how she turned out. So thank you again to the doll planet and there you can see I was starting I'm starting on my blue alien doll and I had been uh, rooting her with that white uh, doll planet hair and I just adored that white hair that was the first one I went to I just for some reason it just struck me so I decided to make this doll using that white hair and so the first thing I was getting started with I wanted to try for this doll I was um, just really wanting to play around with some different uh, products and create some textures on the costume. So what I was working on creating here was an alien. In my mind, I had this idea of a blue alien and she on her planet her planet was covered in like gold dust and so I wanted to create this gold dust on her body and there I was using some clear warbler for her chest piece that I added on some of the that gold leafing technique and um, the like I said the idea is I wanted her to be able to be a, an alien that kind of walked through her planet and got as if it was sand accumulating on her costume but then they adorn themselves with it because it is so beautiful so that was my mind in, in my mind for the creation of this character so her skin is, uh, of course, it's blue, and the when I made my um, uh, grand is a Grand Ant Admiral Thrawn doll, I had used some blue synthetic dye, and so if you want to see how I created that blue color on her skin, you can check out that video. I'll put an eye it in the eye card. But uh, that video shows how I uh, turn the, the color of the skin to blue using synthetic dye. And so that is what I did with her. 
and it's a good product to use because it it's in I, in my experience I found that it's probably one of the best to use for changing the skin color so drastically it's not perfect by any means it does have its issues but um, I do find that it works pretty well so what I went in with first is some white to do some highlights and then I'm pulling back the blue, pulling back out that blue with some pastel I'm starting in with the first layer of yellow because I'm going to give her a, a sort of dusty gold features around her eyes. So I just want to have a gold base for that. Rochelle has always been one of my favorite Monster High dolls to work with. I like her face shape and she was one of my favorite characters as far as Monster High goes too. Um, what do you guys think of Rochelle? Do you like her? Is she one of your favorites or what, who is your favorite Monster High doll? So just a reminder that if you want some close-up tutorials or more customized learning, um, check out what I have to offer on Patreon. My Patreon is set up for those who want to learn more about doll customizing. So um, I have it set up into tiers according to what kind of tutorials and close-up clips and things that I have. I do a monthly game changer and a monthly tip. So check that out. That is in the link below the link to or the description box below has the link to my patreon and we also did a group collaboration uh, a couple of videos back so make sure to check that out you'll see all the wonderful work that my patrons have been doing and we are in the work in the process of planning our next group collab which will be in a couple of months so check that check that out as well or stay tuned for that there I'm just sharing some of the pencils I was using I'm using Arteza for this doll and also some Caran d'Ache Museum Aqua Rel for the iris. So also if you're interested in learning, I do have two full classes on Skillshare. One of them is doll hair rooting with yarn and the other is a step-by-step face-up. Both are for beginners. And this the Skillshare classes are learn at your own pace and formatted into sections where each of the classes have about eight to ten easy follow easy to follow lessons. Uh, there's opportunity to ask questions and you do a class project. So if you're not familiar with Skillshare, it's a learning platform where the classes are available for just there's classes available for just about every creative uh, type of everything creative <laughs> so my favorites are like the watercolor painting classes color theory uh, figure drawing I've done uh, I've taken as many classes as I can fit into my schedule a lot of these classes really help me level up my art so if you sign up through the link in the description box below you'll get two free months of Skillshare with no obligation to continue so I recommend to take advantage of that So here I'm going in with the Pearl FX and adding some shimmer. I had to use or add several layers and one tip that I have for adding shimmer powder to uh, the face up is wait until you're just about completely done. I'm adding several layers here so I, it didn't matter but once I, I have given the face like five coats of sealant then I'll go in and add the shimmer powder and then one final coat of sealant over the shimmer and that way you'll have that glitter show up a little bit better than if you had added several layers of sealant over top of it because that can tend to take away the um, tend to take away the shininess or glitter effect so here I've watered down some uh, I think it's gouache or maybe some craft paint 
it's been a while since I've done this doll I'm sorry but I'm adding sort of like a freckle pattern she has I wanted this doll to have spots so um, you can use like watercolors for this or uh, I was just watering down some acrylic paint I believe and so I gave her like some freckles over her nose and forehead and I did it also all over her entire body I'm going back in and adding even more shimmer and I just wanted her to kind of blend in with the costume that I made for her which I was showing you earlier I used gold leafing and just like gold glitter and just about every gold dust kind of uh, product I had I just like I said I used uh, this gold leafing and I just really wanted to uh, to make it appear that she was walking through a land that was covered in gold dust and, and so this was my imagination imaginary planet <laughs> and so I went in with some gold leafing and little uh, chips of gold So here's a look at her entire body. I clustered the freckles in certain areas around her knees and on her sides and around her chest. And I used several coats of Mr. Super Clear to seal that in. I had so much fun making this doll. It was just something that was on my list and in my mind that I just wanted to bring to life. I'd been doing so many commissions at the time that I just wanted, and I had to get back to commissions. I didn't have time to do a lot of dolls. This was just something I had to, you know, flex some creativity muscles. And this is how she turned out. So what do you all think of this unusual blue doll? I know she's a bit different than a lot of things that I make, and she's maybe not for everyone, but I really enjoyed making her. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great week. And I hope to have another video up next week with my new series. So I uh, hope to see you then. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye.